These are 10 new Xbox games you should be excited for releasing in 2024. These will finally showcase what the Xbox Series S and X can truly do. As everybody says, Xbox has no games, but this video is going to prove that's not true. First up, we've got Senua Saga Hellblade 2. This is a sequel to Hellblade, which is probably one of probably one of the most renowned single player games for quite a long time. Quite a dark setting in terms of a story game. It's not like mental health, all this type of stuff. He plays this girl that's sort of going through all these missions. It's very, very dark setting, the overall aesthetic of the game and also some of the topics that are discussed. But people really seem to enjoy it and it is also currently available on Xbox Game Pass, the first version of this game. And releasing in May 2024 is going to be the follow-up to the original Hellblade. And that too is also going to be available on Xbox Game Pass. So you can play both the first one while you're waiting and then go ahead and jump straight in to number two. Hellblade 2 will continue the story in an adventure through Iceland during the Viking Age. And although the original game was actually a self-published title, which makes it even more impressive why it was so successful, this time the studio has been acquired by Xbox Game Studios, so it will be uh, have a much larger budget in terms of the whole resources that went into developing this sequel. When it launches, it will be exclusive to both the Xbox Series S and X, and it will also be coming to the PC. Probably one of the games I'm most excited about this year is the brand new Indiana Jones game that recently got announced and some gameplay revealed. This is called Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. This game seems to have a whole bunch of different developers working on it. The main studio is Machine Games, but Bethesda, Xbox, and Lucasfilm games have all had input on this particular game. It's going to be launching exclusive to Xbox and PC later in 2024, and in the gameplay reveal, I was quite interested to see the mechanics that were shown. So it's an FPS game. It's got a little bit, I don't want to say Dishonored vibe, but that sort of vibe to the stealth in terms of the gameplay. But there are some elements that do have third person, like if you're swinging on the lasso, like a rope or something like that, it will go to third person. Similar mechanics, I guess, to sort of how Starfield operated at certain instances, but this will predominantly be first person only for a majority of the combat and gameplay without the ability to manually switch. Indiana Jones and the Great Circle is going to take place between the Raiders of the Lost arc movie and also the last crusade so it will be set throughout 1937 with a completely original story and for fans of the film franchise you will have a bunch of characters that you recognize from those movies as well as some new characters being introduced throughout this era of the timeline of course indiana jones and the great circle is going to be an action adventure game that promises immersive action intriguing puzzles to solve along the way as well as uh, lots of germans that you can take out now interestingly the main studio behind this indiana jones game did actually develop wolfenstein which of course if you know anything about wolfenstein you'll know this is clearly a fantastic match. From the initial gameplay that has been revealed, the developers have captured the look, feel, and humor of the Indiana Jones characters. I thought the graphics looked pretty decent. To be fair, obviously, it's not fully out yet, but it had a good, a good look to it, where it looked kind of like high quality graphics but also had a bit of a style Bethesda style to it as well environments and particles looked really nice considering how much sand there was I think it was a lot of atmosphere going on in some of the different environments now if you want me to break down everything you need to know about this Indiana Jones game in, an, in a dedicated video just go through all of the key features and when it's dropping let me know in the comment section down below and drop this video a like and I'll make that video but for now let's move on to the next game and that is Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 now I was surprised by this game because we already have Microsoft Flight Simulator that came out in 2020 and usually like a flight simulator game like is out for about 10 years or 15 years or something ridiculous and they just keep uh, adding little improvements here or there but they've gone ahead and announced a completely brand new game which is literally called flight simulator 2024 this of course is an xbox and pc exclusive but the main difference with 2024 is it seems that they've added more purpose to the game in the form of side missions and quests so i personally thought 2020 was a lot of fun like it was a hardcore simulator so you literally would you know go on and set your own plot literally you know do journeys to airports and just imagine you had some passengers in or whatever whereas this new game is being gamified a little bit so there's going to be little missions like rescue missions as a fire helicopter you know do this cargo mission here and then it's going to have more of a progression to it so there's actually a purpose behind you completing certain flight jobs there's very slim details on this at the moment but my assumption is it's going to work very similar to euro truck simulator 2 if you've ever played euro truck simulator you'll know that you can obviously get a job within your truck have a dead rubbish truck go about those jobs level up get a better truck then employ staff then then build out a company, hire people and AI to do other jobs for you, and then eventually do higher level jobs because you've got certain licenses. So you could do like gasoline jobs rather than just dropping off pallets, you know, flammable goods, acidic goods, etc. I'm guessing 2024 is going to have similar emulets to, to that, but in flight simulator. So you start off with a rubbish plane, then you maybe do some private jet stuff. You maybe do some chartering, a bit of cargo, a bit of thing, and you do a big Boeing jet, and then you could build out a company. Because I'm sure in the trailer, if I recall correctly, I saw a degree of building out your own company with like multiple planes and people 
people flying those planes. So I think it's going to take it to the next level and it's going to appeal to a different type of simulator fans. So you've got Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 for literally learning how to fly an airplane. And then if you want to do that in real life, like literally using that as a tool, and then you've got 2024 that's more gamified and just makes it a bit more enjoyable for the mass majority of people to download this on Game Pass. A game I had never heard of until making this video is Avowed. This is made by Obsidian Entertainment, which is another Xbox game studio, and it's a first-person fantasy RPG game. Now, this is going to be dropping in 2024, both on PC and also Xbox. And just looking at some of the screenshots and trailers that have been shown, I love the graphics on this game. The lighting looks absolutely incredible. It's a fantasy RPG set in its own little world, and it has an island full of mysteries and secrets that you will go ahead and explore along the way. There's lots of danger and adventure and different choices and consequences that you will be presenting presented with. So it's going to have a degree of multiple choice to some of the uh, interactions with AI, which will obviously make an impact to the overall storyline. It's kind of got a mix of everything with a bit of a Skyrim vibe, a God of War vibe as well with that sort of mythology style world. And then a whole bunch of different spells that you can cast, which then gives it that dishonored sort of feel. It's sort of, I'd say like a cocktail of a whole bunch of different RPG style games and like story player games just all merged into one. And it'd be interesting to see what this could end up being. Interestingly, this game is linked to a complex completely different genre of title, which is Pillars of Eternity. This is more of a strategy based game, but some of the characters you were introduced to in Pillars of Eternity will be present within Avowed. Obviously, Obsidian are the developers behind titles such as Fallout New Vegas, South Park Stick of Truth, and a whole bunch of other mega games. They do have a good track record, so there's high hopes that this is going to be a good one. Next up, we've got a game that hasn't had an update since 2021, and that is State of Decay 3. Now, obviously, Xbox has been making these survival games, State of Decay, back on the Xbox. Xbox 360, then State of Decay 2 on the Xbox One, and they've gradually became more and more successful, especially before games like DayZ and stuff like that came over to console. These were literally the first survival games you could play on Xbox on a console. Like, there wasn't really this style of genre, I must give credit to them. There wasn't really this style of genre present on consoles, especially back on the Xbox 360. Now, I did actually play State of Decay back on the Xbox 360. It was a very small game compared to what State of Decay 2 actually was, and it was definitely a bit over-optimistic for the capabilities of the the Xbox 360. But State of Decay 2 has gradually became a very, very popular title with and fostered a community that is quite loyal to it. Now, they announced State of Decay 3 back in, I believe, 2020 it was. And since then, we've had zero updates on this game. All we've had is a cinematic trailer to say that it exists. And then since then, no screenshots, nothing. It's complete silence. So there's huge doubt this game actually might happen. There's a lot of people saying it could get cancelled, etc. I personally am, am hopeful. I think this game will actually come out and we'll potentially see something this year at one of the summer game festivals. Year. It's been a long time since they've showcased this. They had Starfield, all that type of stuff last year as their sort of main uh, showpiece. So I feel like there's a little bit of space this year for them to fill some gaps with some exclusive titles. And this could definitely be one of them. Another game that is also likely to drop this year is Forza Horizon 6. Now, I know we only just got Forza Motorsports that launched in October last year. But Forza Horizon 6 is on its, its that typical life cycle where they do motorsports and they go back to Horizon. It's 2021 was when we saw Horizon 5. So on the cycle, we are due. Uh, Horizon 6 this year but because motorsports did get delayed uh, a little bit last year it might potentially get pushed out to 2025. I personally think there's a high chance we'll see Forza Horizon 6 this year because Forza Motorsports has had a bit of a rocky launch. It's not looking too good. A lot of people not too happy with the new format of how they've rebooted this franchise which I totally get. A lot of these games get rebooted and it changes the approach to be more obviously live marketed with transactions all that microtransactions stuff like that instead of it just being cyclic games so i get why people have issues with these more live service style games especially when they take a franchise that is such an established recipe and then they try and change it to match modern days but anyways with forza horizon 6 there's a lot of cool details that we do already currently know about this game now it's most likely that this game is going to be set within japan which is a completely new map area for the game last game was set in mexico we've had stuff in the uk so this will be quite a cool vibe if it is set in the japan we could definitely have a tokyo drift style game definitely going on heavily inspired by the fast and furious movies i would love to see that it's going to be the perfect setting for drift locations and i hope they play on that very heavily if they do set them up here but there are some rumors that it, there are some other proposed locations that it could potentially fall into some of those locations include germany egypt and also china now i feel like germany could potentially be cool you'd have the autobahn like obviously Obviously, they love a huge highway inside of the Forza Horizon maps. They always have a massive motorway highway that you can just do like 200, 300 miles per hour on in a crazy modified vehicle. So Germany would make sense for matching 
what they do in terms of map design because you could have the autobahn where you could just do whatever you like on that area of the map. So out of those other proposed locations, I could see that being a likely one. But there is also another racing game that's dropping this year, which is Test Drive Unlimited 2 that is also set in Tokyo. So if Forza Horizon 6 does launch this year there's going to be two games sort of clashing in terms of location and genre of game being street racer games so i don't know how that's going to play out so whether that would dictate them dropping it and pushing it to 2025 as a release date or of course it might be a completely different location who knows one of the most popular games available on xbox game pass is definitely the halo master chief collection but obviously the next most popular first party franchise for xbox is probably gears of war there's a huge loyal fan base from there especially from players on the xbox 360 it's been rumored and almost basically confirmed with how strong some of these rumors are that gears of war will be getting a remastered collection now i think this makes complete sense gears of war is a huge huge franchise for xbox and if i'm honest i feel like it has been rubbish since gears of war 4 like since basically the xbox one the franchise just hasn't had the same echelon of respect within the xbox community it's just gradually dwindled down that's just my opinion i used to love gears of war on the xbox 360 gears of war 2 is probably one of my most play games as a kid and basically since the xbox 360 i have never touched gears of war other than for like 20 or 30 minutes to try out a new game and never went back to it now within this remastered collection there's going to be gears of war 1 gears of war 2 and also gears of war 3 i think that makes logical sense however we are of course missing gears of war judgment which is probably one of the most popular and best games from the xbox 360 there's a lot of huge fans of judgment in particular i never actually played judgment so i can't really share my judgment <laughs> on whether that one is true but i played two three all those type of ones and, and I absolutely love those. Now, if we do look at the timeline when it comes to the Master Chief Collection, that game originally came out with only Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4, and it was missing two games out of the six that it could have had remastered, which was Halo Reach and Halo 3 ODST. Probably not too many people complaining about Halo 3 ODST because it was pretty awful, but I digress. Switching our focus back to my point here, if this remastered collection does exist, we'll probably get these three games initially, and then in the future, things like Judgment and anything else that falls into that bracket will be released as DLCs or add-ons just like we've seen with Halo Reach and Halo 3 ODST. That makes the most sense and also gives the game a degree of a lifespan of a timeline of new content to keep it relevant over a few period of years. Obviously this game will come to Xbox Game Pass. I, I do think it's going to happen this remastered collection. We have kind of seen a remastered Gears of War 1 and that would make sense for them sort of testing the waters to see if anyone was interested in that game to then go ahead and do the rest of the franchise. So it's probably going to drop. This will be on Xbox Game Pass and it's definitely going to be worth a play. I'll 100% revisit Gears of War 2. That was my first ever Gears of War. One of my first ever shooting games I was allowed as a kid and it's got fond memories in Horde mode, single player, whatever. Now, Stalker 2 has been a highly anticipated title dropping for Xbox. This has probably been featured in multiple videos by different YouTubers of top 10 upcoming games of 2021, 2022, 2023, and still 2024. Now, Stalker 2, unfortunately, uh, received a lot of delays because of uh, ongoing wars and where the development team is actually based in terms of the world. So I took completely get that, that that is a problem but I credit to the de developers for still bashing it out and still having a timeline for when they intend to release this. Now this is basically a survival horror action adventure sort of story game that's first person that's set within that sort of Russia map design hence the name Heart of Chernobyl. <laughs> it's set in that area of the world so you can expect obviously a post-apocalyptic world with a lot of survival elements and all those cool sort of Metro Exodus, Metro 2033 sort of inspired themes. That's probably the most likely game you could compare this to. Obviously, Stalker did exist in the past. It was a very, very good Stalker 1. It was a very good game. This is finally a number two coming almost 20 years later or something crazy. I have actually played Stalker 2 early when I went to Gamescom uh, last year. I did play it on the, the booth because this was meant to launch towards the end of last year or start of this year, if I, if I recall correctly. I did play it. It was a very early version. It was very good for the state of the game was in I, I sort of struggled with it a little bit though because it was sort of in the middle of the storyline so there was no context to the characters and gameplay mechanics i was just sort of guessing at what i was doing I was, I was a bit of an idiot really running around but i played it for about 20 minutes they gave me a huge demo on it don't know why they, they seem to like me the people on the booth <laughs> so i played it for ages and um, and uh, i thought it was good performance wasn't too bad on the dev kits we were playing on it was the pc version and it was performing okay
okay graphically i thought it looked very good for a beta a demo of a title that's still in our alpha and i'm holding out strong for this game obviously a lot of the other games that this was meant to launch alongside of last year redfall and also heart of atomic i think it was this was one of the three games big three games launching last year in starfield obviously but those first two redfall and heart of atomic were both very disappointing you look at the reviews of those on the store and it's like three stars uh, so hopefully this doesn't fall into the same bracket of that and i think it could maybe be a solid game another game that's been delayed a ridiculous amount of times is arc 2 now obviously vin diesel is the main character in arc 2 and obviously this game has been delayed more than the amount of fast and furious films that are you know, fast and furious 110 arc 2 is just as bad for dragging things out way more than they need to be so obviously vin diesel is going to be the main character inside of, side of arc 2 allegedly according to some arc articles he's a huge fan of arc survival evolved it's one of his favorite games he's played it for thousands of hours don't know whether that's true or whether that's just marketing rubbish and he just took the job because it was well paid who knows let me know in the comment section down below if you know that's true or not or whether you believe it now arc 2 is going to be completely different to arc survival evolved which is quite a surprise it's actually gonna be more of a story focused game in terms of the progression and things that you do within the world instead of it being more of a massive online multiplayer sandbox game where you just spawn in and sort of go about build bases and do whatever you want now probably one of the biggest changes with arc 2 is in regards to the gameplay obviously the last game was first person it did have a bit of third person if you were riding a dinosaur or something or you could switch it if you wanted to run around the map but this new game is going to be third person only so a completely change in perspective and approach so I'm, I'm i'm not too sure how this game sits in relation to the first game it seems like a complete switch in direction but it's using the same name as the first title and i don't know whether it just should have been called something different like arc vin diesel or like arc you know story evolved instead of survival evolved it feels like a complete change in approach from something that was really successful and known for something i don't know how it's going to play out it's clearly the development team are struggling with it hence the amount of delays you know to get it to work or get it to make sense because of these strict third person mechanics and the new character traversal system such as sliding swinging free climbing parkour and so many new things that they never had in the last game i'm actually starting to lose a little bit of confidence in what this could potentially be i loved arc survival evolved i played that in early access on pc way back in like 2015 when it first came out um in 2014 probably even and then i did play it a little bit on consoles but the performance was a little bit rubbish on consoles so i'm not too sure about arc 2 I, I, i'm i'm not vibing with it as i was back in 2021 now finally at number 10 we've got probably one of the biggest games in this list and i'm actually lying i don't have a 10th game <laughs> I, I i don't think xbox has anything else coming nothing of interest to me they've got like a load of persona one ever 25 when i watched the uh, a game summer fest it was like they announced like 10 different persona games but those are also available on playstation so you can't really i feel like it's not really right to put them in this video there's a bunch of obviously other games coming to the console but they're available on other platforms as well but if i've missed anything that's huge i need you to let me know in the comment section down below because i researched this video extensively to try and find the best games and i literally couldn't find a 10th game that was worth talking about of course there's like the new elder scrolls but i don't think that'll drop till like 26 20 26 2027 i think that's miles away i'm not too confident about that dropping this year maybe next year at best it, it, it's not really got much details on that so i'll be clutching at straws saying that that was dropping this year which i don't really want to be doing but let me know in the comment section down below for some game recommendations that i might have missed anything that you're excited about and also what was your rating of this list as a whole was it a 10 out of 10 was it an 8 out of 10 or was it a 3 out of 10 with the game recommendations just trash and should people just go ahead and buy a playstation on the topic of playstation if you want to see some of the best games that are launching on the ps5 in 2024 you should check out this video next to see how both of those consoles compare. But as always, I've been Ben Rollins. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.